Um, each year we survey about a thousand or more organizations across Australia in particular in our Australia Total Remuneration Survey. Just so you know, we found that 58% of Australian organizations reported having turnover issues, while almost 18% of those indicated that those issues were becoming increasingly serious or a problem for the business. We know that job vacancies in particular segments, professional services, hospitality, healthcare, education, consumer retail, digital and tech remain higher than normal. Kate, I might start off with you if you don't mind. Um, we know that MBN has quite a varied workforce um, and you know, as, a, as an organization has gone through multiple uh, iterations and transformation um, as it should. What have been your observations though around the great resignation so far? Hi Raman, thanks for having um, me today. Cynthia, you raised some really good points. Um, I think if you read all the articles and the research, it seems inevitable. It feels like it is just, a, a, you know, it's going to happen, this great resignation. But I have been wondering, particularly um, in preparation for today and just sort of looking at all the research, I wonder at what scale it will happen across Asia Pacific, what shape that will take and how we should as an organisation plan and mitigate for it. In my own experience, I'm seeing demand for critical skills and capabilities impact retention, absolutely. But also for the people who remain in organisations, the pace of change with regards to the skills is also rapidly evolving. So we're seeing that on both fronts. You know, and lastly, as you mentioned, over the last 18 months, many people have had time to pause and reflect on why they want to work, how they want to work, and how they draw value in terms of meaningful work as well. Organisations need to be prepared on multiple fronts as they plan for both the changing nature of skills and roles, as they compete for talent and they engage their people. Um, and this is not a quick fix, it's an ongoing thing. I read this great article, um, an ABC article written by James Norman, and he stated that the pandemic has rewritten the psychological contract or employment deal. Today's workers want to be seen as people, complex, messy, colourful, diverse, flawed, fabulous humans. And as we consider retention and attraction, and also that deeply human element of why people might want to work and find purpose, it's actually a really wonderful opportunity we all have. So across tech and um, telecommunications, which is my background, um, demand for technology and digital skills outweighs supply. Many of the talent segments that MBN needs are in demand. So if you think IT, cyber, data analytics, network and software engineering, demand outstrips supply. So more industries want the same skills. And in Australia, that talent pool is not growing rapidly enough. Um, and this was a pre-COVID problem as well. So MBN is competing not only with other telcos and tech organisations, but also banking, consulting, mining, the education sector. It is a really congested marketplace. So what we're finding that as um, tech and the tech work evolves, talent with those required skills and capabilities are increasingly in high demand, but also the half-life of the tech skills that they have is five years and diminishing. So this shifting skills landscape means that we're seeing shift skills emerge, evolve and expire really quickly. Gartner talks to about 10% of new skills are required for a single job year on year. So when we think about that pace of change and the shifting skills um, landscape that we're seeing at MBN, we're really starting to ramp up and be focused on the critical skills and capabilities that we need in order to meet our strategic, our strategy and our vision. I do think that talent movement is a good thing for skills and infusion across the industry and, and across multiple industries. However, that demand is having an impact on retention and it's something that MBN has to acknowledge and plan for both in our short and long term. We do have a really wonderful, varied and diverse workforce. Um, I'm only four months into the job, so I really enjoyed getting to know a bit more about our workforce. We span from field to regional roles We work directly, who work directly with customers through to high tech and engineering roles that build and run our national network. We span roles across offices, at home and out on the road. We need to continue to attract great talent, but also continue to retain our brilliant people. Talent mobility and cross-skilling is really important. Um, in my own team, we've got a great example of a, you know, a great field tech and engineer who now works with us designing training using AR and VR to deliver cutting edge training back into the field. So you're seeing that mobility and that um, infusion happen inside MBN, but also across the industry as well. So just going back to that question that you posed about the great resignation, we absolutely are seeing changes in the way our employees want to work. We're also observing um, changing demographics on who wants to work and the way that they want to work, and it's not the same for all. And we're also seeing an ongoing demand for critical skills. These shifting elements are impacting NBN, but 
we're looking at it positively and saying that with that comes great opportunity as well. Thanks. That was awesome, Kate. And, um, and you, you have touched on uh, a, a big headline everywhere, which is that, that, that fight for those digital and tech skills and, and to hear your approach um, I know will be so helpful to, to many on this call and, and including, and I'm sure is shared by Graham, who I'll go to next, because you have a workforce as well that has um, a strong technical bent to it. But um, in addition to that, uh, also a varied workforce um, at, uh, at Oceana Gold. Um, Graham, what are your thoughts on the great resignation and, and what's around the corner for you from a talent perspective in 2022? Yeah, thanks, Cynthia. Um, certainly, uh, the points Kate raised are very, are very, very familiar to, to what we're suffering as well. And um, thanks, Kate, for telling me you've got more tech people. I'll come and steal them. But um, uh, you, you know, the mining is a is an interesting um, uh, business because they quite often don't see it. You just see people coming in and out of planes. But but it's also going through a very rapid tech uh, technology sort of innovation phase, and um, and and is doing a lot of catch up compared to many other industries. But what we're seeing, and I guess because we have an operation in the US, we've got a little bit of uh, lead time ahead of us to, to learn from some lessons there. And, and we have seen a turnover increase over in, in the US, um, you know, 4% sort of uh, extra in the last sort of few months. And for various reasons, um, you know, some could be wanting to be closer to home, some of course, you know, people are never satisfied and the like. But one thing that is for sure is that we're finding on the ground as part of our stay survey uh, piece, a big driver is, is about the workplace and being treated as a human in the workplace, but also being um, close to family and friends and getting more of a balance in life. Um, you know, what we're also conscious of is mining is very international. So you, between Australia and New Zealand, we have a lot of people that go, you know, across the waters. Um, and uh, WA has a massive shortage of labour right now. We know as soon as those borders open up, um, you know, we're getting on the defensive now to support our uh, New Zealand operation uh, because we know that's where a lot of Kiwis uh, typically go from a uh, mining industry point of view. And then we throw in a, 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 an industry which is also poised for growth because uh, typically when economies grow, um, you know, minerals, etc., are, are key to all of that. So we've got a couple of challenges. One is industry growth, industry change and transformation, um, as well as uh, uh, just the dynamics of people wanting to be closer to home um, dictate a little bit more around certain conditions such as work from home and uh, and the like. Um, <clears throat> the the in terms of 2022, um, again similar to to what uh, Kate has really touched on is, you know, the driver of technology and influence that's going to have is certainly going to influence us. Whether it be, you know, working from home and that ability to to communicate. Uh, to be able to access, you know, uh, company drives for information, um, you know, use of uh, SharePoint and all those sorts of things, which are going to require a whole different access to, to um, you know, company information and the speed at which that is. What does it mean in terms of an expectation of employees with, you know, their Wi-Fi networks? And the list goes on and on, um, let alone uh, what do we see around people wanting to enter into mining, whether it be mine engineers and, and some of those other technical roles, where perhaps it's not seen as a, um, you know, as a sexy industry as such, uh, especially with the ESG concerns uh, and the like, despite it being a well-paid industry. So we know that there, there is going to be a greater focus on automation at many levels. Uh, and we also know that knowledge workers are going to become more demanding and where they want to be. But more importantly, the PNC teams, it's really going to, for people and culture teams, I think is really going to evolve their need to, to drive um, uh, businesses through greater levels of ambiguity and and settle uh, managers so um, and reshape really what is strategic versus tactical and this is going to become a strategic issue uh, over the next three years is my view thank you thanks Graham um, I think um, you know I, I think bringing this the global piece to this you know irrespective of of where all of us sit now Mercer is also a global company too so we also feel the varying uh, effects as well of, of the great resignation and, or turnover or voluntary attrition, uh, whichever parts of the world that uh, name it that, uh, we're seeing that as well. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, we have become a more global community irrespective of where, where we sit. And so I think those impacts that you mentioned just now, um, you know, make this a, 
certainly a much more complex um, yeah. issue to resolve, not just one for a particular state or locality. Correct. Certainly problem solving, you know, with mine engineers and, and the like who, you know, starting to say they want to work from distant locations, but you actually need them together to, to support problem solving. You know, that's going to change the whole way dynamics occur online and, and the like as well for us. So, uh, yeah, lots to do. Absolutely. Thanks so much for sharing, Graham. And James, uh, we, we kept you to the last part of this because you have a really unique perspective to share with us about this because you see a lot of people, obviously, in your organization um, that you serve um, where you are helping people transition uh, into new careers and, and so forth. So it would be really interesting to hear from you what changes or trends you are seeing uh, particularly the expectations of leaders, both of those candidates, uh, but also those who are um, making decisions now about change. So James, over to you. Thank you. I'll start by saying, I think that there is a tremendous opportunity for leaders to play an active role in avoiding the amount of resignations. And that great opportunity comes with a real sustained focus on do you have redeployment right? And do you have your internal recruitment processes right? Because the ability to actually look at what you already have and the talent you already have and figuring out how you can effectively redeploy people, and in particular, that internal recruitment process uh, is so, so critical. I mean, don't give talented employees a reason to leave the organisation. And if someone comes and they're assessing what else they can do within the organisation and they feel like they haven't been paid full respect in an internal process, then they are likely to leave you. You've just given them a reason to leave you over and above any of the things we've already discussed. So I think getting that component right is absolutely critical. The second point I'd make is where we and everyone is looking into the data and surveying and trying to get a handle on what this means. And so uh, we've done something similar and looked at what the expectations of leaders are and done a survey of you know, a little over 25,000 responses globally and then looked specifically at the results for Australia. And a couple of them stand out. And so some of the things leaders have been doing particularly well to retain people since March 2020 when COVID struck is the ability to work differently, to grant flexibility to employees has been a real plus. Um, the ability to actually allow people because of the rapid and changing nature of businesses, so to allow people to stretch a little bit. In some cases, it's fully redeploy. In some cases, it's sort of stretch what they're expected to do in their existing role has been beneficial. The watch out with all of that is, as things snap back to a more normal environment and people return to the offices and getting the balance of hybrid working versus in-office working right, how do you actually retain flexibility, the trust in your employees, the continued communication, but then also watching out as leaders to make sure that um, you don't have the loss of opportunity, oh, Graham just referenced it, that incidental learning, the coming together for problem solving, because when we think about jumping on video calls or video mediums to communicate, there is normally a very specific purpose. And so that lost incidental learning, the discussion you might have when you go and grab a coffee together, uh, the discussion you have in the interim time between meetings in the office, that's gone. And so, for that development to be re-established is going to be important. So even offering full flexibility, being very conscious about development opportunities, how they're going to occur both incidentally and formally, because through 2020 and start of this year, probably the foot has come off the gas a little bit when it comes to development opportunities, mostly because they're only available virtually and there is still a real preference to at least have a component of, develop, of development opportunities to bring people together in person. 